What's going on guys? Chris here with Grady's Gear and today I have a very very special unboxing for you guys today. Um, before I get into it, full transparency guys, uh, I'm going to be taking a break from YouTube, from uploading videos and stuff like that and also um, just expensive knife buying. Um, I've had a lot of fun doing this and uh i do this for a hobby that's what i love to do i love conversating with you guys on instagram and in the comments and on live streams and all that but there's been some things going on in my personal life that just require my attention at the moment and um you know everybody's fine my wife is fine my kids are fine but there's some things that are going on behind the scenes um some personal stuff that needs my immediate attention uh, to where I can't focus on this channel and my hobby and stuff like that. Um, just, I got stuff tied up right now. And so after some self-reflection and just time to think, I've made the decision that I'm going to take a step back from YouTube, not permanently, but for a while. Um, it, it's just seems to be the best decision I can make right now and it's just the way that it is guys um you know I do this for fun and I love what I do and um but I need to take that step back right now and there are more important things in life than uh the knives and uh, sometimes that's hard to believe but uh that is the truth there are more important things out there that require my attention and uh that's what I'm going to do so I, and I say that with like a heavy heart kind of thing, uh, but you know, I'll be back and stuff and you know, I was going to do a video on the pros and cons to being on YouTube and like the harsh reality to it um, and maybe some advice to people who are maybe thinking about starting a channel. I thought about doing that as my last video before I take this hiatus. Uh, I still might. If you guys want to see something like that. Let me know in the comments down below and I can do that. That's not going to be me showcasing any knives or anything. That's pretty much just going to be me looking at the camera and uh, talking to you guys and uh, explaining some things. But uh, if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments down below and I can do that for my last video. But if this is my last video before I take the hiatus, I will be totally fine with that because I have something absolutely amazing in here. Now, this is something that I bought not only because I've been waiting on the knife for so long and I love the knife ever since I've seen it, uh, I wanted one, but not only do I support the company that is doing this, but I support the maker behind the company. And this is coming from Ben Belkin with Jack Wolf Knives. And uh, I first heard of Ben last year during blade show atlanta i did not go to blade show atlanta and i will not be going this year either but um kevin and kyle kevin left the edc and kyle dto knives and gear you guys know those are my, some of my best friends in the world they went and they were actually picking me up something from there and they hit me up and was like dude you have got to check out this guy because in our little group of friends me jake bearded gear kevin left the edc and kyle dto knives and gear uh, they're all not slip joint guys. <laughs> I'm the only slip joint guy. And uh, they hit me up and they were like, dude, we want to buy his slip joints. And we're not even slip joint guys. So, of course, I had to check him out. And then I got to meet Ben. We had him on the live stream. I think he's been on the live stream a few times. I have messaged Ben. We message all the time back and forth. Uh, we've talked on the phone back and forth. Uh, ben has become a friend. Uh, you know, not just a friend that's a maker, but an actual friend. Uh, ben is amazing, dude. Uh, he's just an awesome human being. Anytime I need advice on something, especially from like a business standpoint, he helps point me in the right direction. And the way I can describe Ben is, you know, like when you're at the doctor and you're trying to figure out what's going on and they throw out a lot of medical jargon at you that you don't understand and you don't want to seem stupid. Um, it's kind of like that sometimes when you're talking to makers, they throw a lot of big words that you don't know what it means or it, it's just knife talk but you don't know and you're like can you just put it in a crude layman terms for me that's what ben does and uh, he does that well now, he can turn that on he can be professional 
when he needs to be, depending on who he's talking to. But at least he's talking with me. He can explain it in a way that I, I get it and I understand what he's talking about. That's one of the things I love about Ben. And then getting to know him. He started his company, Jack Wolf Knives, because his grandfather is the one that got him in the knives and his grandfather carried slip joints. That is how I got into knives. I inherited my grandfather's collection. He died when I was three years old. So I don't really, I, I vaguely remember him. Uh, but all I have is the stories. And he always carried a slip joint. He was a knife collector. He was a gambler. He was a, he played in dart tournaments. Uh, he liked his drinks. And he liked the dog tracks. <laughs> uh, very, very, he had a very, very wild life. And uh, he lived it very well. And that's what sparked my interest in knives when I was a kid was slip joints. Uh, because that's what was really around back then. They've been around for a long time. And all these classic patterns and stuff. And I was just fascinated by it. So slip joints, traditional knives, modern traditionals especially, they hold a special place in my heart. And um, honestly, you know, I could, I could give my son the Koenig Arius when, when he's older. But he may not be into something like that. But honestly, something like what Ben has with his slip joints would be the knife that I want to give my son, that I want to pass down to my children. That's something that resonates with me on a more personal level and that I have more of a uh, commitment to. You know, I mean, I'm just uh, it's more sentimental to me. So uh, awesome, awesome. And we just we have a lot in common. So. I am going to unbox this now. We're almost seven minutes and I haven't even touched the box. This is coming from OCD for EDC, guys. One of the things I love about Ben is that he not only reached out to the mainstream uh, knife retailers like Blade HQ, et cetera, and stuff like that, but he also reached out to like the local mom and pop shops, which is who I like to support um, and, and give my money to. And uh, I was lucky enough to get this from Justin and Molly. They're amazing people, awesome human beings. And uh, they shipped this. I got this. It said it wasn't going to be here until Monday. I ordered it on Tuesday. And here it is Friday. And it's already here. So it took three days from the time I ordered it. So that's awesome. Um, and this is coming from them. So I actually brought out one of my slip joints. This is one of my modern traditionals. This is one of my absolute favorites. This is the Lion Steel Dom. And this one has the uh, Sheep's Foot Blade on here. M390 Titanium. It's got the Barlow style pattern, it has the crown spine, which I love. And this is just another interpretation of a modern traditional. I love these modern traditionals. I have not reviewed one on my channel before, specifically because I've been waiting on this. This is like going to be the new standard. If it's as good as I think it is, and as good as my friends are saying it is, it's going to be the new standard. But that's not taken away from these. These are fantastic for the money. I also have the round head too, which is the same Barlow style pattern. This is in the ebony wood. And this one's got the spear point blade. Gorgeous. Gorgeous knife. Love it. And I, the cool thing about these, with these torques, I can interchange these covers. So if I want to rock the ebony wood on my Dom, I can. So very, very cool. So. Oh, screw it. I'll just use the round head because it's in my hand. Let's get into this and see what we are working with. I am so freaking excited, guys. I can't even contain myself right now. I am fumbling at my words. <laughs> and I will explain some differences with traditionals and what makes them so collectible and so much fun to collect. Let's see what we got in here. Is this my invoice? Yep, that's my invoice. Don't want to show that. Let's see what else we got. Some bubble wrap. Here we go with the knife. Oh, what we got in here? I'm not sure what's in here. Let me check and see. Oh, I hit the camera. Oh, it's candy. <laughs> it's candy. Nice. Cool. Got me some candy. What is this? Oh, shit. It's got his logo on there. Oh, 
Oh, it's a slap bracelet. So if you're born in the 90s, you know exactly what this is. That's cool. OCD for EDC. What? That is freaking rad. So if you were born in the 90s, you know what these are. This is cool. I love this. Or in the 80s. That is awesome. And that's the cool stuff that comes with buying from like a mom and pop shop. That is awesome. What is in here? Oh, and I got a sticker. So shout out to Justin and Molly. I'll, I will leave a link to their website down below. He also does a CME, which is that cool thing for the compression lock, like on um, a lot of spider coats. So that is awesome. Thank you guys so much. Shout out Justin and Molly. You guys are awesome. Let's check out this. Modern Interpretation, Timeless Design. I love his logo. If you guys do not know, Jack Wolf was his grandfather's name, which there's not, to me, that's like the most badass name ever. <laughs> okay, let's see. Jack Wolf. Belkin was my grandfather. He carried a well-used slip joint knife in his pocket every day, just like my grandfather did. As far back as I can remember, <clears throat> I was fascinated with his knives and I couldn't wait to boyhood. <clears throat> I couldn't wait to have one just like that. That boyhood fascination grew into this company, which I created to honor him and bring you the best knives I am capable of producing. Inside this box, you will find an exceptionally crafted knife made from the finest modern materials it will serve your everyday needs and provide you the gained <clears throat> the emotional satisfaction gained from experiencing functional art i am forever grateful for your support i hope each jack wolf knife brings you the same satisfaction and excitement it does for me ben belkin owner and operator jack wolf knives really really cool part of this is the unboxing experience these are not cheap they're almost 300 bucks depending on which variant that you get but ben knows the unboxing experience he is a huge fan of gec which i am as well and the gecs come in the cardboard tubes with the wax paper gives you that old time feel that nostalgia and ben's nostalgic just like i am i love nostalgia and he's taken it and he's twisted it into something awesome Okay, there's nothing else in here. Check this out. So you have a tube, but it's not a cardboard tube. It is aluminum. And it's a twist cap instead of, you know, you pop the top like you do on a uh, GEC, Great Eastern Cutlery. There is where the art is from. The other cool thing about this to me, because I have all the artwork for all the different knives that Ben sent me. I love those, and I'm going to have them framed. I'm probably going to do like a shadow box type thing. The artwork that was done, the illustrator, has done work for Marvel. And I am a huge Marvel fanboy. That was my collection before I even started collecting knives. Like before I realized that I was actually collecting them. That was my collection, and I still have a bunch of Marvel stuff, guys. And to see that he actually got a Marvel Illustrator to do this, to make the Jack Wolf an actual comic book character, just, I mean, it connects with me on so many different levels. I'm really getting kind of emotional thinking about my grandfather uh, with this. This is so cool. And this is the Sharpshooter, if you're not already aware. This, out of his whole pattern lineup, was my number one that I wanted. And I think it was a number one for a lot of people, which is why he came out with this one first. The other one that I absolutely have to have is the low drag jack. That is the other one that I absolutely just have to have. You got his logo right there. Let's twist this out. Check it. You got a pog. <laughs> that is so sick. And if you don't know what a pog is, you're probably too young to be watching this video. If you were born after 2000, you probably don't know what the hell this is. If you were born in the 80s or you're born in the 90s, such as myself, you know exactly what this is. These are super cool, super collectible. Love it. Let's see. Check it out. It even comes with a pocket slip, which you do not see a ton. GECs do not come with a pocket slip. This is really thick leather too. Oh, look at that. It's going to wear in well. It's going to get a nice patina on it. This is awesome. Jack Wolf Knives. It's great that it comes with a pocket slip. I can go either way. 
It doesn't really bother me. Let's see what else do we got in here. We got a sticker. Oh, silica gel and just packaging material in here. Okay. All right. Let's move this off to the side. You get a cool sticker. And right here, embossed Jack Wolf knives in this bright orange microfiber, which is awesome. Let's get this bad boy open. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I went with the black micarta. It also comes in natural micarta. OD green micarta. And that blue fat carbon that was oh so sexy. Oh man. Let me pull this off camera. Just check her out. Oh my goodness. Mmm. Centering, dead centered. As you can see, it's got the gun stock pattern, which is hence the name Sharpshooter. Looks like a stock of a rifle, which is awesome. Let's open this. You do have a crescent moon nail nick right here, which the difference is like, this is a long pull. You see how long that line is on the dom? This is a long pull. This is a crescent moon nail nick. And it's not on both sides, it's just on one. And a pinch. Ooh, okay. Let's see right here. Yes, sir. That pull, I give it about a six and a half, maybe seven. Ooh, and that's like my sweet spot. Okay, so by pull, if you're not familiar with slip joints, guys, a pull is rated from one to ten. One being my four month old daughter can open it. And it's super light. 10 being if I put my fingernail in here on this nail nick and try to pull it out, I'd probably bust my fingernail trying to do it. 10 just being super, super stiff. Most guys, some guys like a harder pull, some guys like a lighter pull. For some people, like a five is like perfect for them. I prefer a six and a half or a seven. When you get to eight, to me, that's a little too much. Uh, the Bronco, the Pena Knives Bronco that I had that I did a video on. That was like an eight. That was like ridiculous, ridiculously uh, strong pull on here. This is fantastic. This is the sweet spot for me. And look at this full hollow grind that just goes all the way down that blade. You have a very generous blade stock right here, guys. Very generous, but it tapers down to a really, really nice thin edge. So it means that this thing is going to cut and it's going to perform extremely well as a knife. Not as a stabber, not as, you know, you're prying or anything like that. A knife. Just cutting. It's going to cut like crazy. It's going to be a laser beam, which is awesome. Ergonomically, my two fingers come up here on the top part. And then where it flares out, my other two fingers rest right here. Which makes this extremely extremely comfortable in the hand i'm trying to see if i can feel a hot spot or if anything's uncomfortable and i am not feeling anything that's that's one of the beautiful things about a slip joint guys there's no pocket clip there's no really hot spot to think of because you're using it in a different manner so that is awesome see the clothes Ooh, let's see the acoustics on this thing Yes, this is exceptional. Guys, everything's rounded, contoured. Nothing was left unlooked. Let's look at the transitions. It's very, very good. That back spring looks amazing. You have titanium bolsters on here, micarta covers. These aren't scales on when you're talking slip joints. These are called covers. You have torques. Look at that. Look at the inside in here. Look at that. So, I freaking love it. Overall, I love this knife. This is fantastic. It's lightweight. 
just throw it in your pocket and go. This my card is going to darken over time and get a great patina. This is something that I could pass down to my son and be completely okay with it. I, I'm the type I can carry a slip joint and primary carry it and no issues. It does not bother me. And the pull on this, because of how stiff that spring is, it really gives you some confidence when using it. And I know some guys are weird about that. And they want a locking knife. They want, you know, to have that confidence. I have that confidence with this. So, earlier, when I said, let's pull this uh, microfiber just so I'm not weighing it on the table like that. My new baby. Um, what makes this so collectible? for not only knife guys but the traditional guys out there you know what makes these slip type of slip joints so freaking collectible and appealing well this is where ben has really set himself up for years not just months for years first of all he's got like 10 different patterns that he's letting out every month he's letting out his pattern which whatever pattern he lets out next month will be the same it'll have the black micarta natural micarta or green micarta but it may have like a different fat carbon or something like that, right? So he's got to go through all of those before he'll even come back to the sharpshooter. But when he comes back to the sharpshooter, the sharpshooter will never be the same as this one. Never be the same as the first. And what I mean by that is the next version of the sharpshooter could have a different cover material. He can go to wood, you know, or carbon fiber or whatever kind of different exotic or bone, um, whatever kind of material he wants. Sorry, this freaking candy is just like making me drool. Um, or he can change the blade shape. You have a beautiful clip point blade on here. He can change the blade shape and put a spear point blade on the next, on um, the next, uh, sharpshooter, right? Or the next one could have the same materials and everything, but instead of the crescent moon, uh, nail nick on here he could put a long pull on it instead there are all these changes small detail changes that he could do on the next sharpshooter and that's what makes it super collectible that's what makes it fun and he can do that going down the line on each one my one of my all-time favorite gun stop patterns was the gec number 44 buffalo jack and that one had the same it had clip point blade but it had Gabin Ebony covers on it, nickel bolsters. It had the clip point blade, but it had a secondary blade, which was a little pin blade on there. So he could add a ne an extra blade to it and put a little pin blade, and it could be different. The combinations are endless for what he could do for just this one model. Imagine he has like 10 different patterns, the classic patterns. He can do that with all of them. So that's what I mean by he's literally set up for years and then once he's done all those then if he wants to introduce in the meantime if he wants to introduce like a new pattern that hasn't been done before or his own in-house design that's a different completely different pattern he can do that as well so it's just completely limitless on what he can do and that's what makes these so freaking um collectible and that's the reason why he keeps posting stuff saying hey I'm almost out of these. Get them while you can because it's going to be a while before these come back in stock. And he's not lying. He's got all those other patterns that he's got to go through before he comes back to this one. And when he comes back to this one, it's going to be different. So if you want this one, you got to get in on it now is what he's saying. And that's the fun part. This is the stuff that I geek out over. Guys, I love my modern folders. Sorry. Let me eat this candy. I love my modern folders. I love drop shot action. But like sometimes this is where I'm I'm different than other people. I geek over this kind of stuff. But like people start talking about bearing swaps and detent ball ramps and all this kind of stuff. It is so boring to me. I would rather list, watch the grass grow. Um, that stuff is just no offense to anybody that's into that kind of thing. But I would rather watch the grass grow. This is the stuff that gets my heart pumping. This is the stuff that really makes me excited because this is where I started out. This is the kind of knives that I used to buy all the time and that I just, it just resonates with me. It makes me think of how I started, how I got into knife collecting. I'm nostalgic like that. And 
Ben has just created a modern interpretation of a, all these classic patterns. And really, the first one out there that's really sticking out and trying to keep that traditional knives alive. Because everybody today, it's all about drop shot action and this, that, and these exotic blade steels. He's given you all the premium materials, titanium, micarta, or carbon fiber, M390 blade steel, but he's putting it that perfect fusion between old school and new and making it exciting. So he, and he's really attracting all the newcomers who have no idea about slip joints and who have like Kevin and Kyle and Jake that just weren't in the slip joints. They're getting them excited. He's getting them excited about it. And I just think that's freaking fantastic. We need more people like that. These knives were made, these type of knives were made back in a simpler time. Back when knives were just, it was just your everyday carry tool. You needed a knife, you pulled it out, you made your cut, you closed it back up, and you put it in your pocket, and you go about your day. Now knives are judged more on being fidget toys. And there's nothing wrong with that, because I do that myself. I love a good fidget toy. But I have knives that do that. This, for me, is all I really need. For me, personally. I can't speak for everybody else. For me, this is something, this is all I need. It's the perfect size. Most slip joints aren't that big. You have tons of options. But now I've finally found a brand that I can stand behind and really just... I've always considered myself more of an enthusiast rather than a collector because I've experienced a ton of knives. But I'm not a collector. I don't collect just one brand or I don't just collect one model. I can see myself doing that with Jack Wolf knives. Not necessarily, not necessarily the model. I mean, the next time he does a sharpshooter, I might buy that because it's super collectible. I can grab, I'll grab that. And I also really want the low drag jack. There's a few models that I want. I can actually see myself collecting those. And it's the first time for me that I've actually felt that way about a knife. That I, I can actually collect that. Not to mention, this stuff is artwork. This isn't just packaging, guys. Like, I could put this on my shelf and just keep adding it to it every time he comes out with one that I want. I can, uh, oh, I almost dropped it. I can put this up and display it. Like the packaging is awesome. The experience is awesome. The guy behind the brand, I, I freaking, the dude's awesome. Like, and I don't mean to gush. Like I really don't. Uh, I'm typically not like that, but this just hits on so many different levels for me. Uh, I, I get really excited over slip joints, especially something like this. This is the first time that I think somebody has just nailed it, nailed it. You know, I, I love the lion steels and these are a great value because these are like, I think I paid 130 bucks for this. This is awesome. This is great. And this is a great, uh, you know, fusion between modern and traditional. Look at that crown spine all the way back and stuff like that. This on just a totally different level. And now he can't say who his OEM is because he had a an agreement with them to where he can't say who his OEM is. That doesn't bother me. It is made in China. That's all he can say, but not where, you know what I mean? So that don't bother me. They did a fantastic job, whoever did it. And this is just a home run. A freaking home run. This has been a long time coming. He went through a lot of shit to get this to this point to get these out to us uh he went through different oems and he finally finally got these out to us and uh, the dude's just killing it and like i said he has set himself up for years and i think the thing that's just really getting me excited because you can hear it in my voice like i'm talking louder and shit like that as i'm going but the thing that's so exciting is that he's attracting new people to slip joints i, f I feel like this type of packaging, this type of knife and stuff. I feel like it was a lost art, especially with traditionals. It was a lost art. People were just, they were forgetting about it. Now, GEC is another great company, American made. They're still doing it the old school way, which is amazing. GEC is awesome. But if you're not into that and like, you're like, I just don't want 1095 or whatever. That's part of the reason why I don't really buy those a whole lot. I live in a humid climate. It's not like I can't keep it from rusting and stuff. It just requires more maintenance 
and I don't have the time and I'm lazy and I don't want to do that. Having the modern materials with the more stainless steel, it, it works for me. So I would much rather just go for this. Are these expensive? Yes. This knife was like 275 and then 300 if you get the fat carbon, right? Totally, totally worth the money, in my opinion. Now that I have it in hand, totally worth the money. You will not regret it. Super slicey blade. Even if you use this as a secondary, you're going to be happy. I'll primary carry this. It's getting to be hot outside. I will throw it in a slit or just chuck it in my pocket and go about my day. Awesome knife. Let's get some close-ups. You got a stone wash right here. Jack Wolf. M390. Very minimum. Very, very minimum branding, which I love. That hollow grind just looks absolutely sexy. The black micarta looks fantastic. You got bead blast uh, titanium for the bolsters, which will probably develop snail trails, but it's probably going to look better with use. Um, and just get that well-worn in. Slip joints do that. They get that well-worn in look. And uh, this is not going to be a safe clean. I'm going to carry and enjoy the ever-living shit out of this. Like I said in the beginning, this is something that I could pass down to my children. and something I'm excited to pass down to my children. Because they may not be into that kind of stuff. But everybody knows what a slip joint is. Everybody knows how a slip joint operates. Anybody who's ever handled a Swiss Army knife, it's the same exact type thing without a half stop. So they know what that is. And I think my son would absolutely love this. So, that's my take on it. I absolutely have nothing bad to say. I really don't. <laughs> I have nothing bad to say at all. The pull is great. The walk and talk is great. <sighs> I love the way it sounds. Just very well executed. Other companies are... <laughs> He's definitely going to be competing with other companies and uh, they got the work cut out for him because I think this is great. So that's my take on the Jack Wolf Knives uh, Sharpshooter. It's my unboxing. I mean, it's not a review or anything, but it's going to be my last video for a while, guys. So I just think this thing's fantastic. The experience that you get unboxing it, everything's collectible and uh, the knife itself is fantastic. Amazing, amazing job. Awesome job. And Ben's such a cool dude. So if you get a chance, if you haven't, if they're still available, get one. You won't regret it. Trust me. Just do it. All my friends have one and they love it. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I don't know when I'll see you, but I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> have a good one, guys. I'll see you in the